Everything is on track for an amazing D&D game session. You've done everything you're supposed to have done. In the last game session, you asked your players what they wanted to do next. And despite 20 minutes of indecision and hemming and hawing, you managed to get a unanimous response out of them. That, that never happens. And then, in between game sessions, you designed the adventure, ensuring that you included all three pillars of gameplay, encounters of varying difficulties, a cool environment, and hopefully a memorable boss fight. Thus, you show up for this game session, excited and confident that everyone is going to have a blast. And what do your dear, beloved players do? They change their minds, of course. The thing that they decided to do in the last game session, yeah, they, they don't wanna do that anymore. Instead, they wanna do that other thing, the, the thing you didn't prepare for at all. And thus, the nightmare, your nightmare begins. How do you survive the game session? How do you come up with content for your players? And more importantly, perhaps, how do you deal with this treachery? How can you best extract a pound of flesh as recompense. There are three basic approaches to this dreaded situation. And as luck would have it, that's what we're gonna be discussing today. Now, if you run D&D or Pathfinder or another tabletop role-playing game online, you are probably as frustrated as I am with having to create digital maps for your game. I found that it takes lots of time and well, I'm just not very good at it. And that's exactly why I recommend Chepeku Maps. If you wanna save time and have amazing maps for your games, you cannot go wrong with Chepeku. They have over 4,000 hand-drawn maps in their archive with more added every week. Not only do these maps make fantastical scenes come alive in your games, but they also have animated maps to take your RPG to the next level. What's more, they come in a variety of variations, such as seasons and time of day and work seamlessly in most popular virtual tabletops. Reduce the frustration of game prep today by checking out Chepeku at the link below. Join the master cartographer tier and you'll get access to everything. Number one, level with your players. Look, there, there is nothing wrong with simply telling your players something like this. So uh, last time guys, you all said you wanted to go to the Dungeon of Dread and rescue the dragon from the wicked princess. However, now you're saying that you wanna go break into the king's palace and jailbreak the dragon's eggs. You, you know that I was going to plan the Dungeon of Dread for this game session, but now you're changing your minds. What gives? Now, check this out. Notice how you don't have to ask the players if you could do the Dungeon of Dread instead because you already prepped for it. And you don't need to tell them that they're all going to do it instead. All, all you need to do here is simply lay out the facts. They said X, which resulted in you doing Y, but now they're saying Z. By stating the facts in this manner, you are implying that they should hold to what they said they were going to do, but you are not explicitly asking or telling them to. You, you want this to be subtle. You're, you're hoping that playing on the idea of keeping one's word and perhaps a tad on guilt will result in their choosing to go to the Dungeon of Dread as they had originally planned. Of course, this, this may not work, and if it doesn't, there is nothing wrong with asking them to go to the Dungeon of Dread. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you this. It is much better to allow your players to choose. If you pressure them into doing a thing, their hearts probably won't be in it, and it may feel like you're railroading them. It's almost always better to let players choose. It simply results in a better game in my experience. Now, yes, we can argue about it being an illusion of choice or not all day long, but even illusions of choices are more satisfying than no choice. So the question then is what do you do? If your players decide to go to the king's palace and jailbreak the dragon's eggs, despite your reminder of their previous decision. Well, 
you have two basic options. By the way, if you're finding this information useful, please give me a thumbs up and share this video with your fellow game masters. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel and you think I don't completely suck, why not subscribe while you're at it? Did you know that the subscriber count is the single most important vanity metric on YouTube? It means absolutely nothing, but we all compare our relative success by it. So, you know, do your part and help me not feel like a loser. 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 Some of you know what movie that reference is, don't you? Some of you do. Well, everybody else is like, Luke, you're crazy. Number two improvise. Look, this is the game master life. The chances of you never having to improvise something are incredibly slim. I, I would say that they are non-existent. Now for me, it varies, but anywhere from 25 to 50% of every game session I run involves improvising stuff on the spot. I generally prep my adventures quite thoroughly, but one, it's impossible for me to predict everything my players will do or everything I might need. And two, there are some things that I'm pretty good at improving, so I don't need to spend a whole bunch of time prepping them and planning them. So in the rare instance when my players do go off and do something unexpected, I say rare because one, I'm pretty good at dropping plot hooks they'll follow, and two, I have amazing players who work with me and don't intentionally subvert what has been planned. But when they do go off the rails, so to speak, I just improvise things on the spot and this is what I suggest you do as well. Yes, it can be nerve wracking. And if you're a new game master, doubly so, because you don't have years of experience to fall back on. However, the more you do it, trust me, trust me, the more you do it, the better you're gonna get, the less nervous you're gonna feel, and the smoother it will go. Now, more than likely what you improvise won't be as good as something you plan in advance, but remember, you only need to get through this game session. And then you're gonna have two weeks or so to plan out the rest of the adventure. So just struggle bus your way through it, things will be just fine. My Pathfinder 2 group literally right now decided to go somewhere, an entire dungeon that I don't have planned. And I literally had to BS my way through like an entire game session making stuff up on the fly. I was in survival mode. But now, before our next game session, I have time to prep for it. Well, I kind of have time. I, I don't really have time, but but I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my best, okay? Anyway, I have an entire video on improvisation that you might find helpful. I'll put a link to that down below. But I will give you a few steps and guidelines that you can follow to get yourself through this game session. First, going on an adventure usually involves traveling from point A to point B. So while they're traveling, you can have a random encounter happen, or they can run across a point of interest. This will usually take up 30 minutes to an hour of game time. Now, I personally rarely have truly random encounters. Instead, my random encounters are actually planned encounters, and I usually have a few of them prepared in advance. They often reinforce the central theme or plot of the campaign, and usually use cool monsters that I'm trying to use somewhere anyway, but that I don't necessarily want to theme an entire adventure around. So I'll just slip one of those encounters in. Remember, a good random encounter will have context around it. Monsters don't just pop up out of nowhere. No, they have a purpose for being there and a motivation or goal. Now, points of interest are even better, usually, than random encounters. The essence of points of interest are a way for your players to discover cool and interesting things while they're traveling, hidden locales, dangerous secrets, that sort of thing. We don't have to delve into the specifics of creating points of interest right now, but if you'd like to learn more, see my video on points of interest at the link below. But anyway, the point is that while the group is traveling to the adventure location, in this case, the King's Palace, you throw in a random encounter or point of interest. This buys you time and would have happened even if you had planned the adventure out ahead of time. Now, once your players arrive at the adventure location, you're gonna need something for them to do. And it sure would be great too if you had a map for the adventure. This may seem like a tall order, but it isn't that bad. Now, to help us accomplish this something to do part, we're gonna consider the standard five room dungeon construction. Now, if you're not familiar with the five room dungeon, it follows a simple design concept. 
Basically, each dungeon or adventure has five parts to it. One, the entrance and guardian. Two, a puzzle or social interaction challenge. Three, a trick or setback. Four, the climax or big battle. And five, a reward, revelation, or plot twist. Now you don't, you don't gotta worry about all five of them during this game session. Remember, you're just trying to survive. Instead, focus on the first two. <laughs> if you could come up with an entrance to the king's palace, just its doors or the kitchen entrance, whatever, and then after that have a social interaction or puzzle, that will probably be enough to get yourself to the end of the game session. And if you're looking for puzzles that you can drag and drop into your game, we have tons of them in Layer Magazine that you could behoove yourself of. Oh, and our upcoming Kickstarter, Layers and Legends 2, is also gonna have a bunch of puzzles in it. So then what you want to do here is that during the first part of the game session, when you're having your random encounter, the point of interest, etc., whenever Whenever your players are talking among themselves or deciding what to do, you should be thinking about and planning these two elements. Normally, I recommend that the game master listen to the players when they are discussing things, as it can be extremely helpful. But this situation is extraordinary and requires that you plan the next part of the game session while they talk. So. Tune your players out and get things squared away. So for our King's Palace, let's say there is a moat of lava and flames around the castle. The drawbridge is down, but so is the portcullis. That's the entrance. The players need to figure out a way in. However, there are a dozen gargoyles perched about the battlements, just waiting. And when the players make entry, they swoop down upon them, defending the castle. A combat ensues and the players destroy the gargoyles. They notice more gargoyles regrowing upon the battlements, animating and swooping down. Crap, they never stop, but that's a puzzle for them. There's a much larger gargoyle in the courtyard that doesn't animate, but every time a gargoyle is destroyed, it glows for one round, during which time another gargoyle regrows. That's the key the larger gargoyle. Destroy it and the smaller gargoyles stop reanimating. So the larger gargoyle falls into dozens of pieces as your players smash it apart. But that triggers an alarm in the castle, alerting the mayor domo. This elven servant of the evil princess emerges onto a balcony and begins to converse with the players and... Well, there you go. Believe it or not, I literally improvised all of that while I wrote this script here. No thinking, just one idea leading to the next and rolling with it. And that right there is probably enough to get you to the end of the game session. We had an encounter, a very basic puzzle, and a social interaction. Now, in between game sessions, you can plan out the rest. Of course, you would need to calculate the gargoyle encounter to make sure it was of the appropriate strength. But online encounter planning tools exist for games like D&D and Pathfinder 2, and can make this fast and easy to do during a game session. Really, there's nothing we did there that couldn't be done on the fly. The only really challenging part might be coming up with a map. Now, if you're playing in person, this is easy. You just draw something on your dry erase map. But if you're playing online, it's more challenging, of course. Now, if you use maps from our sponsor, Chipeku, you might be able to browse their library of maps really quick and find something that works. However, if that fails or is too difficult to do while also running the game, maybe for this game session, you simply run the game using theater of the mind. This removes the need for a map entirely. And if you'd like some guidance and tips on running theater of the mind, check out my video on that topic at the link below. Number three, stall. Stall like your life depends on it. Every game master has been here. Your players want to go to the king's palace and you have absolutely no idea what to do. You don't have a map. You have no idea what's in the palace. What are the guards, the encounters, boss fight? Holy crap, there is no way you can do this. Panic flames your soul. And it's all you can do not to break down completely. Your brain is melting. Everything I laid out for how to improvise made sense when you watched this video, but now in the moment, you just can't think. It's okay, breathe, try to relax. Remember, at the end of the day, everything will be just fine. Even if your game session sucks, so what? Who cares? Every game master has bad sessions. If this one isn't so great, your game will survive. What's more, I personally would much rather have a game session that I wasn't able to plan for due to no fault of my own, right players? Be the one that sucks rather than the one that I did plan for. What's more, your players will know 
that they pulled the switcheroo on you and that you're just pulling stuff out of your butt the best you can. And if the game session isn't so great, that might actually encourage them not to do that sort of thing in the future. Of course, on a side note, if you do a spectacular job with this game session, they might do it more often. And <laughs> you kind of screwed yourself over there, didn't you? But, but don't worry about that. In fact, forget that I mentioned it. Anyway, back to stalling. At this point, you're less concerned about running an amazing game and more concerned with just preventing the players from reaching the King's Palace in this game session. That's what stalling is. Now, we already mentioned one way to stall, a random encounter or a point of interest while they travel to the King's Palace. However, there are other ways to stall besides just bombarding them with random encounters, which you could technically do if you must. Basically, anything that takes up game time can be used. Are your players trying to make a decision on something? Is the conversation dragging on for a while? 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes? Do you normally step in and encourage them to make up their darn minds? Well, just let it carry on a bit longer. They probably won't notice anyway. Does a side conversation come up about the most recent PlayStation game or Baldur's Gate 3? Okay, let them talk about that more than you normally would. Don't jump in and bring things back to Pathfinder just yet. Remember, you're stalling. Did the pizza just arrive? Great. You need to eat. And guess what? You're gonna do that before you pick the game back up. 20 minute break for everyone. Of course, if you know that you panic when it comes to improving, I strongly suggest that you have a handful of pre-made encounters, points of interest, social interactions, and other game elements ready to go in case of emergencies. And then when needed, you can reach into this stall bag and pull out whatever you need. Our upcoming Kickstarter, Layers of Legends 2, is gonna have tons of that stuff for you, or you can pick up Layer Magazine right now and get what you need. Now, at this point, you're probably saying that what I'm suggesting suggesting is less than ideal, and you're 100% you're right. This is your last recourse. This is your last act of desperation. No, it's not ideal. No, the game session probably won't be great, but if your players refuse to go to the Dungeon of Dread, which you actually prepared for them because they told you that they were gonna go do it, and you were just not able to improvise the beginning of the King's Palace, then what are you left with? Sure, you could just end the game session, but that would probably suck. Remember, many players enjoy the act of hanging out with their friends just as much as they enjoy actually playing the game. So if you can give them a pretense of a game, to justify hanging out with their friends, they're probably gonna be okay with that, at least for that game session. But that's just what I think. What do you do when your players go off and do something you don't have planned? And don't forget to check out Chapeku Maps at the link below. Get gorgeous maps without the hassle of creating them yourself. Now, if you'd like to learn why your players keep leaving your games, watch this video right here. And until next time, happy game mastering.